Today I'm going to show you how to quickly change the color of hair or really any object using a Lightroom or Photoshop's camera raw. This is going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to be a deep dive into working with masks and combining masks inside of Lightroom or camera raw. And also it's going to show you how to change the color of hair. So if you're thinking about changing your hair color and you want to pre-visualize it, I'm going to show you how to change it to natural tones. I'm going to show you how to do enhanced tones. Then we're going to do an ombre where we mix two colors together and then we'll do the mermaid hair where we actually mix three colors together, which is going to be interesting for creating a realistic hair effect, as well as getting a deep dive on working with masks inside of Lightroom. Let's get started. Okay, I'm working in Lightroom Classic, but you can also do this in Camera Raw through Photoshop. Just simply choose Filter, Camera Raw, and then you're in the filter. Settings are identical on both. First thing we want to do is we want to select the hair. So we're going to use AI selections to do this for us. So we're in the Develop module, and then we're going to go to the Masks, and then you'll see the person has been detected. Click on the person. Now you'll see the different attributes. And as we roll over, you can see the selection. And one of them is hair. So I'm going to click on hair. And then I'm going to create a mask out of that hair. Now you'll see in the mask panel, we've selected the hair. Now the hair is not red. All it's doing is it's just showing the mask. And you can see the color there. You could change it to anything you wanted. But why don't we clean up this mask just a little bit? Because I noticed it's gone over into a bracelet or a bangle or gauntlet, whatever you want to call it. And why don't we just zoom into 100% and we need to just clean this up. So I'm hitting the space bar and I'm going to drag up. I notice it's on her fingers. It's, it's gone over. All right. So what we want to do is click on the mask. It will pop open to reveal some more menus. Choose subtract. And then the tool we're going to use to subtract is the brush. So we're going to choose the brush. Now, by default, when we subtract, this brush is going to be in erase mode. You can see that because erase is dark. And we've got auto mask turned on, which means it's going to select the edges automatically. And this is great. So we can use this to, you know, select our finger. Let's go a little bigger. The right bracket key will make this bigger. The left bracket key will make it smaller. And we're just going to go over the finger. And we're just going to select this. Let's go over the next one. Now, I'm not going to try and make these perfect. I'm just going to just show you how this works. So if you want a perfect selection, just take the time to go over the image doing exactly what I'm showing you here. So you're not going to do anything different. You're just going to just do it a little bit more detailed than I'm going to right now. Now, of course, some of these images are going to be much easier than others to do this. And the mask is sometimes more accurate than it is on some images than it is on others. In this case, it's not bad because this is not simple here. It's pretty complex. All right, so let's go up here and I'm kind of noticing a little bit around her kind of face here. The hair is kind of bleeding into her skin a little bit, the color, the mask. So let's just go over here a little bit and I'm just kind of cleaning that up a little bit. Now, this is not going to be perfect. The idea of this or the object of this lesson is not to show you how to do perfect masking. It is to show you how to do the coloring. So forgive me if the mask is not perfect, but I mean, would you really want me to spend 10 more minutes cleaning up this mask? Probably not. All right. So let's go ahead and do the hair color change. So we're going to do this in three stages. We're going to do single hair, just overall color. Then we're going to do an ombre where we do two tones. And then we're going to do mermaid here where we do a three tone. So this is going to be a great lesson to teach you some of the more advanced features working with masks. All right. Now with the mask selected, it's very simple to get different colors. All we simply do is just go down. We could play around with the temperature and tint and the hue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show temperature and tint first. Then we'll use the hue because why don't we just go for a simple brunette? We're going to take the exposure. We're going to dial it down. I want to warm that up a little bit. So we're going to warm it up using the temperature. And then we can take the saturation down. And essentially, you know, there's dark brown. If you want a lighter brown, sandy blonde, just increase it a little bit. Maybe give a little more saturation for the sandy blonde. And that's essentially how we would do that. All right, let me double click to reset the saturation. I'm going to reset these two and the exposure. And now I'm going to show you some other tints that you might see. So we're going to go into the hue. And if you want pink, there's our pink right there. 
if it's a little too much just take the saturation down and you can have more subtle pink let's look at some other tones now we can start to get into maybe the purples and let me darken the exposure down to give you a stronger kind of a purple a bit more exposure and of course we can play around with the temperature in here a little bit too if we wanted just to kind of clean that up take that saturation down a little bit there's our purple and if we take our hue push it a little bit more now we can start to get that blue look let me increase it so we can get that kind of steel blue that you'll see sometimes with a very low saturation if you wanted gray just take saturation all the way down and reset the temperature you've got gray and different shades of gray just by changing the exposure all the way down to a black now if you did want to do black what I would suggest is doing more with kind of the blacks and that'll kind of hit those tones more not so much with the exposures and then you can do the white separately which will get the highlights shiny highlights or you can just kind of dial them down a little bit what we're going to do now is we're going to do an ombre ombre is french for shadow very popular hairstyle so usually the ends are lighter than the tops so i kind of give a beach bleached kind of a look on the tips or you know different colors on the two but this is a good example to show you how to create two separate colors and blend them using masks in lightroom all right so why don't we go for a darker tone so we can take our exposure down again and we're going to go for this brownish tone once again that we did before play around for saturation all right great so what we want to do is either make the ends darker or the top darker and the ends blonde so what we're going to do is we're going to go under the mask and now we're going to subtract and then when we subtract we're going to use the linear gradient now to apply the linear gradient we click and drag up so if we click and drag up here and we go there's kind of the bleached look you'll see this all the time it's more kind of subtle or if you just wanted it more towards the ends we could go like that and then of course you could do the other one which i see a lot in california where just the tips are darker we can make this more abrupt and not so gradual we can rotate you can see how we can really just kind of control this and do different things here all right what I want to do though is I really want to step up this game what we're going to do is we're just going to reset this and why don't I get rid of this gradient here so I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to delete that gradient all right so we've just got our overall adjustment okay now we're going to create the mermaid here all right so why don't we start by taking the hue and we're going to bring this down to kind of a bluish hue and let's play around with the temperature just to kind of solidify this a little bit what it does see how it just kind of brings it together and maybe the tint just to fine tune it all right so that's pretty good we've got the blue there and that'll work nicely for the ends all right so what we want to do now is we want to take all of this we're going to click and then we're going to duplicate the mask so now we're going to create a new color but this color is also going to be influenced by the color underneath that's fine let's go under the hue and let's push it into maybe a pinkish kind of a tone that's kind of nice let's take the exposure down just a little bit there that looks pretty good all right and let's do a third color so we're going to choose here and we're going to duplicate this so let's go here we're going to increase it more into this side and i'm looking for kind of the greenish aquamarine tone kind of a greenish bluish aquamarine and there's that greenish tone all right so what we want to do now is we want to create a kind of a gradient here where we can blend the three colors so what we're going to do is we're going to hide the top color we're going to grab the second color and now we're going to create the mask like we did before so we're going to choose subtract we're going to use a linear gradient let's drag it down and notice now we can decide hey do we want blue or purple at the ends we can decide let's flip it around and i think i'm going to go with the blue at the ends kind of like the original idea and then slowly blending 
into this kind of a pinky purple. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to use, let me bring that down just a little bit. Great. All right, so now we want to blend the top down into another color. So we're going to choose the top. Let's reveal it again with the green. Subtract. And now we're going to use the linear gradient. And once again, we're just going to drag this. And we want to flip this all the way around. Notice as I do this, we can choose just green on the very top, or we can, you know, choose where we want that green to go. And as you can see, we've got a lot of control. All right, so even if you're not changing the color of hair, there's an infinite amount of possibilities this is going to open up for you, because what we're doing is we're combining masks and blending different masks together inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. So it's a little bit more advanced. Maybe you haven't tried combining masks before. Let me know in the comments underneath if you've experimented with this or you haven't. And also let me know if you find this useful. By the way, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button. You won't miss any of my tutorials and ring that bell, turn on notifications. If you liked it, smash the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.